What is going on everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome back to Electronics episode number 22. And today we will be learning all about transistors, the very building blocks of computers and integrated circuits which we will be learning about in the near future. Now understanding how a transistor works and functions will help us understand how more complex decision making circuits work at their lowest level. And also we will quickly see the power of the transistor as well as many other components as this series continues on and we begin to work with all of these components together. Now this episode is going to be only a brief description of how a transistor functions and how we can use a transistor. I will not be going full on in depth with how a transistor works at the lowest level with all the calculations that you may need. And that is mainly because one, for this series and building an 8-bit computer like we will be doing, we don't need to know that complex information about a transistor. And second of all, when we actually begin to use transistors in circuits, which we will in just a couple of episodes, you'll quickly see how we can use them in an actual circuit, and it'll become fairly understandable without even knowing all of the math behind it. But of course, if you're really interested in that stuff, definitely look up a few articles and videos on the subject because you will learn a lot about transistors if you do look up some more information, and I do have links down below in the description to help you out with that. But I will be explaining to you all we need to know to follow along with the rest of this series here about a transistor. Now a transistor can be used sort of like an electronically operated switch, just kind of like a relay in a sense, but they can also be used to amplify signals and do much much more. And as always there are different types of transistors, some are rated for lower currents and voltages, and others are built for much higher voltages and currents, and some even have slightly different functions and work a little bit differently, but today we will be looking at a fairly common transistor type, the bipolar junction transistor, and bipolar junction transistors, BJTs, come in two different types. They come in the NPN type, which is what I have right here, the schematic symbol for an NPN transistor, but they also come in something called a PNP type transistor, which I will not be getting into in this tutorial here, but the links down below in the description, which provide you much more in-depth information about transistors, do cover PNP transistors and contain more complex information about transistors in general. But let's just take a look and learn about the NPN transistor here. Now this type of transistor has three connections. The one on the left is called the base connection, the top one is called the collector, and the bottom connection is going to be called the emitter here. Now think back to what we did with relays. A relay, if we applied power to the electromagnet, would allow a switch to turn on and off. Well, a transistor can act very similarly. Basically, if we do not apply a voltage or a current to the base, if we don't do anything to the base, then the collector and emitter are prevented from having electricity travel. It acts like an open switch and electricity won't travel there, just like a relay. However, if we apply a small amount of voltage and current to the base, then we will allow electricity to flow from the collector to the emitter, kind of like a closed switch. Now that is only an extremely basic version of how a transistor works. In reality, basically, if a small amount of current travels from the base to the emitter, if we have a very small amount of current traveling here, and we also have approximately 0.6 volts traveling to the base, then we allow a much, much larger current to flow from the collector to the emitter. It actually amplifies sort of the current going from the collector to the emitter. In reality, that is kind of more what's happening, and of course there's much more to it than that, but I won't be explaining that in this tutorial series. So let's go build a circuit with this transistor to see how it differs from a relay. So let's begin by drawing our transistor here, our NPN transistor, which looks something similar like this, and it has an arrow on the emitter, that's how we know it is an NPN transistor. And what I'm going to do is, on the collector here, I'm going to attach a resistor, and I'm going to attach a resistor because I want an LED to be right here. And whenever we have an LED, we probably want a resistor in our circuit. And this LED is going to be hooked up to the positive terminal, of course, to our battery. And I'll go ahead and connect the negative terminal of our battery ground to the emitter pin of the transistor here. Now if we just tried to run this circuit or we made this circuit as it is right now, then it would not work because we aren't applying any voltage or current to the base connection here, so it acts like an open switch and electricity won't be able to flow through the circuit and light up the LED. It won't work. Just like our relay circuit. Now you may at first think that to make this work, we have to hook up the base of the transistor to the positive terminal of the battery, but this in fact will not work. And it doesn't work simply because that's not how a transistor works. Now if you knew a bit more information about the lower level workings of a transistor, you would probably understand why this circuit doesn't work. 
all we need to know is that we need a smaller amount of current and a smaller amount of voltage to go to the base to make this circuit work. So we can either have another smaller power source hooked up to this uh, base connection right here, or we can just take the positive terminal of our battery and we could hook up a high valued resistor to the base. So if we made this uh, a high valued resistor right here, then our circuit would work. So in the case of what I'm gonna build in just a few moments here, I use a 100K ohm resistor, a 100,000 ohm resistor here. That way our circuit works. And to be able to control it a bit better, just kinda of like we had in our relay uh, tutorial series in our relay circuit, I am just going to go ahead and draw in a push button schematic symbol here. This way, when we push this button, we will allow electricity to go to the base. The LED should light up. If the button isn't being pushed, then electricity is not going to the base, so everything should not work. It should act like an open switch, and the LED should not light up. So let's go ahead and build this circuit. Now what I have here is a 2N2222 NPN transistor. This is one of the most popular types of NPN transistors uh, that has been made. And as you can see, it has a little rounded edge, and then on the left side, there is a little flat edge. And I know by looking at the data sheet for this transistor, if I look straight on to the flat edge, from left to right, the pins are emitter, base, and then collector. Now, of course, your transistor may be different, so take a look at your data sheet to figure out what pins go to where on the transistor. So we are just going to follow essentially the schematic that we had made just a few seconds ago. We are going to hook up our emitter directly to the negative terminal of our battery. So I have a wire going to the negative power rail of my breadboard. That's being connected to the emitter pin of my transistor. Next, I have my LED here. I have the longer leg, or the anode, going to the positive power rail of my breadboard. And the shorter leg of the LED, we are just going to connect a resistor to that and going to the collector of the transistor. Now in my case, I'm using a three volt power source or two AA batteries. And for this resistor right here, it's a 200 ohm resistor for my LED. So we have our LED and 200 ohm resistor hooked up to the collector of our transistor. And now we need a way to control the base of the transistor so that we can turn the transistor on and off kind of like our relay did. And for that, I just have a simple push button here. I'm gonna hook one of the legs of the push button up to the positive rail of my battery, or rather my breadboard. So we'll get that terminal hooked up to the positive rail of the breadboard. And then from there, I'm gonna have a 100,000 ohm, a 100K ohm resistor going from the other terminal of this push button to the base of my transistor here. And remember, we need this high-valued uh, resistor just because of the way that the transistor works, which is a bit too advanced for this tutorial series. But anyways, we want to have a high-value resistor right here. So if we press the button, we will allow a small amount of current to flow to the base of the transistor, which should hopefully allow electricity to flow from the collector to the emitter, allowing this LED to turn on which it does. So very similar to the relay circuit we had, when we press the button we activate the transistor, allowing the LED to light up. Now what we can do instead to make this project a little bit more fun is I took out that 100,000 ohm resistor there, and we aren't even going to be using this button anymore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up a regular wire to the base of my transistor here, so just a regular wire, and I'm going to hook up another wire to the positive terminal of my battery, the positive power rail of the breadboard. And what we can do is we can actually use our finger to be a resistor in this circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tip of my thumb here, and I'm going to place this wire on the tip of my thumb. Then I'm going to place the other wire here to the tip of my thumb as well, not quite touching. And as you can tell, I can actually light up the LED by just putting the wires on the tip of my thumb because my thumb is actually acting like that 100,000 ohm resistor. Of course, it's not 100,000 ohms, but uh, it is acting like a resistor, which allows us to power this LED just by the tip of our finger. And that actually has a couple of uses in the real world. You can even hook up a photoresistor, which is essentially a resistor that changes based on the amount of light that gets to it. So you can actually have a day or night detector, which is pretty cool. There are a lot of uses that we can make just using one single transistor. 
I know that this was a strange tutorial, I didn't go full on in depth into transistors, that's a bit out of the scope on this tutorial series, but down below in the description I do have a few links where you can learn more about transistors, that would be a great thing to do. But it's not necessary that you do that for this tutorial series. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next video.